Believe it or not, there used to be a time in a not-so-distant past where you could find computers that people were leaving out for the trash collection. Unfortunately, those days are definitely in the past, as most municipalities have done away with the once ubiquitous lackadaisical attitude about throwing out electronics in uh, regular garbage. So it came as quite a surprise to me when I saw this computer sitting outside with, you guessed it, household trash. This is an HP Compact 6200 Pro small form factor PC. As just about everybody knows, the nice thing about these is you can orient them vertically or horizontally. And the nice thing about having them oriented in this fashion is you now have a perfect pedestal for your computer monitor to rest on. This has a dedicated headphone output as well as what I presume to be a software definable headphone and microphone jack. Four USB ports. I believe these are only USB 2.0. I doubt this has USB 3.0. That is a three and a half inch drive bay for use presumably with a floppy disk that you would have been able to get supplied from HP when this was new or quite possibly even a media card reader. There's a line input, headphone output, PS2, keyboard and mouse, serial, VGA, six more USB ports and a gigabit ethernet port and saving the best for last, a display port. And that works out in my case because I have plans of repurposing this as a sort of makeshift home theater PC slash radio jukebox automation system. So I could hook this up to my TV using a display port to HDMI adapter and be able to carry both the video and the audio signals right to the TV. A nice change of pace accessing the internals of this computer and upgrading and modifying it is done very easily with the flip of a lever or I should say multiple levers because everything that has these little green arrows stickered all over the place indicates that it is easily accessible using a toolless approach. So let's say your hard drive kicks the bucket and you need to replace it. What you have to do is pivot and swivel the power supply out of the way, depress the green lever, and then slide the hard drive up and out. No tools required unless of course you consider the fact that you have to swap over these little installation pegs. You can also remove the front panel just like that minus the dropping it on the floor part. The optical drive puts up a bit of a fight getting it out and I'm sure this has something to do with me maybe not doing this 100% the right way but you can of course pivot it up and out of the way if you don't manage to smash your finger in the process. And just slide that up and out. A little finicky but not at all that difficult to do. And there we go, date code manufactured September 2011. This has a total of four RAM slots, two of which are being occupied by the super talent branded 4 gigabyte modules for a total of 8 gigabytes DDR3 RAM. There's two PCIe X1 card slots and it's interesting because you can actually see the traces on the board for a full-size PCI 16 slot. There's a full-size PCI X16 card slot for a discrete graphics card and then a full-size PCI slot for older legacy peripherals like my Adaptech SCSI card. I could use that in here if I so desired. If I wanted to pop these little knockouts out lift that up out of the way and you just slide the blanks out of the way. Just notice that it is a Samsung hard drive. It is the original one that this would have come with from HP as it has an HP supplied part number tag. Aside from the incredibly dusty front panel that I take uh, to mean that the person didn't know that the front panel just came off as easily as it did. Aside from that this thing is very well kept and I'm sure that had something to do with the fact that this was used in an office environment. And now we come to the part that I usually dread the most with uh, repurposing old computers. That's getting the thing set up and working. So to do that we're going to round things out with some Dell accessories like a Dell USB mouse and a Dell keyboard. This is where it helps to have plenty of spare cables lying around and even a Dell monitor I've robbed off another system for good measure. I will admit this isn't the first time I've connected this system to power. One thing I will say is that uh, this computer is decently well served by its CPU and RAM configuration but the hard drive is not doing it any favors likely because this thing is just about filled with the previous owner's data. There's only probably like four or five gigabytes left uh, as free space. I was able to manipulate through the well-known um, exploitation of the Windows Restore command prompt to 
modify accessibility manager, the accessibility manager button that's available on the logon screen to instead bring up an elevated command prompt and use that to reset the password of the user account. You can see it's logged us on with a temporary profile and no settings or data will be maintained after log off. And quite a number of different programs here that were used on this thing in its uh, official capacities in some kind of an office environment. This has a Core i5-2400 CPU clocked at 3.10 gigahertz. So this is a quad core. I was really surprised to see that when I brought up Task Manager and saw that there's four separate graphs for each of the four cores of the CPU. I won't be connecting this thing to the internet until I get a fresh install of Windows on here because there's quite a bit of um, nanny programs and things like that running in the background like network doctor remote support, network doctor monitoring, web root secure anywhere endpoint protection, printer utilities, so yeah, I won't be connecting this thing to my home network. Sure or not, I'm going to be wiping this system and performing a clean installation of Windows 7 Professional using the refurb product key on here. And then I will be taking advantage of the Windows 10 upgrade for licensed versions of Windows 7. And quite possibly may even then upgrade this system once more to Windows 11. Honestly, I probably leave this thing on Windows 10 for as long as I possibly can. Windows 11 will be there, and who even knows what's going to happen to running Windows 11 on unsupported systems and the updates uh, possibly being cut off by Microsoft in the future. And this is where the plot begins to thicken. So I want to upgrade this machine to run Windows 10 Professional right now. So I've reset it using the recovery partition of Windows 7, but now I need to activate the Windows 7 product key that it has on the side on the sticker before I could upgrade to Windows 10. And because I don't currently have a hardwired Ethernet connection over here, I had to use this TP-Link Wi-Fi card, but the driver, Windows doesn't have any drivers for this thing out of the box. It's a USB wireless AC adapter, and it's too new for Windows 7 to have built-in drivers. So fortunately, uh, using another computer that is connected to the internet, I was able to download the driver package get that installed and now we have Wi-Fi that's working for whatever reason it wouldn't activate online but uh, calling their activation hotline was successful Windows is now activated ready to go now install Windows 10 professional this is gonna take a while and here we are about four to five days after starting this project I should have had this thing completed in half a day's time the Windows 7 uh, install and then the Windows 10 upgrade process and then configuring everything on Windows 10 shouldn't have taken all that long but of course I just haven't had that much spare time and so I've been dedicating just the bare minimum of time and effort into getting this thing up and running. The addition that we're running is Windows 10 Pro of course that's because the version of Windows 7 that we were running previously uh, prior to operating Windows 10 was the professional edition. The only reason I'm even bringing that up is because of the benefit of running Windows 10 Professional that comes in the way of the group policy editor. Because the one thing you might notice right off the bat is a lack of the Cortana icon to the right of the search bar on the taskbar, as well as, in my opinion, in my eyes, the annoying propensity for Microsoft to put little icons and pictures and things down in this corner of the search bar like search recommendations like Google Doodles pretty much and I'm not interested in having my desktop experience distracted with that kind of tomfoolery so that's something I definitely wanted to turn off. For example you could take a look at a couple of the choice uh, group policy entries that I took advantage of enabling and thus would disable those corresponding settings. So aside from Cortana and those little stupid icon things being disabled now in the search bar if I type something like, um, oh, I don't know, cookies, <laughs> instead of getting recommendations for searching the web and cookie recipes and things like that that show up usually in this search menu of the, of the taskbar, now I just get results for uh, local results on the computer. Though I will say that I have grown uh, quite accustomed to looking at the lower right of the taskbar for uh, quick at a glance uh, weather information and occasionally traffic updates. So where do we go from here? Well first and foremost in the immediate future I have designs on obtaining 
an OEM HP 3.5 inch drive bay media card reader because what's a home theater PC without a multi card reader? Also, plan on adding a USB keyboard and mouse to this system to do away with the uh, copious amounts of wire spaghetti. And also to get a hold of a display port to HDMI adapter so that way instead of having to use VGA and analog audio output to connect this to a television, I could just rely on the display port. And maybe even obtain some kind of a TV tuner video capture card so I could use this thing as a DVR of sorts. So even though this machine didn't cost me anything, definitely going to be getting my money's worth out of it. Definitely had to be happened to be a very fortuitous set of circumstances that led me to discover this machine and rescue it from the trash. Especially considering that the number of systems I've found in the past being, well, set out for trash, hail from the Pentium 4 and earlier eras. So having something that's uh, relatively modern from 2011 with a quad core and a decent amount of RAM right off the bat, I'd have to say that's a win.